All right, Alexander, uh, I believe Sue Gray has now got her Partygate report uh, done and wrapped up, and she handed it to uh, 10 Downing Street. And uh, where else is she handing this report to? And uh, is it going to go public? Is everyone going to be able to read it? And uh, what do you think is going through Boris Johnson's mind? Uh, tough week ahead for uh, the UK Prime Minister, I imagine. Yes, but he's had one extraordinary piece of good luck, uh, uh, thanks to the police. We'll come to that in a moment. But um, Sue Gray, as you rightly said, has completed her report and she's handed it, it, handed it in to Downing Street. And of course, it's in Boris's possession. And just before we did this programme, I got news that Boris is about to speak to the House of Commons and um, all the indications are he's going to make a fight. He's had no intention of resigning. And he has pub promised to publish this report, Sue Gray's report, except he won't actually publish Sue Gray's report. He will publish what is going to be a heavily redacted part of Sue Gray's report, which is going to redact all the information about the parties, which is, of course, what the report is supposed to be about. And Boris is in a strong position to publish only a redacted version of the report because the police have now given him a get-out-of-jail card, essentially. He promised to publish the report in full, but he no longer has to because the police have asked that the report be redacted. And the reason the police have done that, or the reason they say they have done that, is because they're carrying out their own investigation. And if the full report, the unembellished report, is published, then that will allegedly interfere with the police investigation. Because the police would then find that witnesses that they might want to interview might have read this report and might therefore shape their evidence to the police in accordance with what they've read in the report. Can I just say, this is an area of the law, I happen to be, for many reasons, extremely familiar with, I've come across it many, many, many times, what the police are saying is pure, unadulterated nonsense. It's absurd, and it does make me wonder why they're saying what they're saying. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. So uh, the the Independent uh, newspaper had a poll which said that to its readers, which said that uh, nine in uh, in ten people believe Boris Johnson should resign. Readers were asked, "Should Boris Johnson resign?" Respondents given a choice of yes, no, and not sure. And of the eight hundred and ninety one respondents. Uh, 797 or 89.5%, 90% said yes. I also saw another poll, Alexander, which placed, I believe, Rishi Sunak as the uh, as the heir apparent. Um, what do you make of all of this, the, the public opinion, all of this sentiment about Johnson mm. and about uh, Sunak? Yes, well, first of all, I, I would be extremely wary about accepting those sort of opinion polls. I mean, the independent is very hostile to Johnson. So you shouldn't take that entirely seriously. Much more concerning for Johnson is that it seems that the Conservatives, the Conservative Party itself, that's the kind of the people who run the Conservative Party for Johnson himself, and also separately, the, da the Daily Telegraph, have been doing their own private po polling. And in the case of the Telegraph, they've also had some focus groups and what they find is that mood in the country amongst conservative voters has strongly hardened against Johnson. I mean, this is cut through. I mean, people made many, many sacrifices during the lockdowns. I think in our last programme, I mentioned my lawyer friend who was parted from his wife and, you know, loyally went along with... Um, with what the government was telling him to do. And he was a, you know, a, a Johnson supporter, a Conservative voter, a Brexit supporter, an ex-army man. So those people feel deeply betrayed and extremely angry. And that anger is communicating itself through all these 
uh, opinion polls, it's, it's in letters to MPs, in letters to constituencies, in all of this. So whilst I would take with a you know, massive pinch of salt claims in The Independent, about 90% of people wanting Johnson to resign, there is no doubt at all that there is very, very strong anger against him across the country, amongst many people, including amongst conservative voters, both those who supported the lockdowns and, of course, those who opposed them, because they all feel that Long Johnson was lying to them at the time when he imposed the lockdowns in the way that he did. So uh, there we are. So that's that's really damaged him. Now, about Sunak, I think now it is unequivocally clear that if uh, Johnson goes, the only credible candidate is Sunak. The British public have seen Liz Truss and they're not impressed by her at all. So this attempt to build up Liz Truss as some kind of alternative that would win over the mass of the people, you know, this sort of tough, uh, uh, you know, working class woman who's risen up. Well, that hasn't impressed anybody. I mean, that, that act has absolutely not impressed anybody in any part of the British electorate. And um, Kwarteng, who is, in my opinion, the only person who could give Sunak a credible run for his money, uh, has, I think, wisely given the mess he's decided to step aside and is letting Sunak take over. I think Kwarteng realises that if he took on Sunak now, he would lose. So he's not going to do it, and he's going to keep his powder dry and wait for another day. And I think, tactically, Kwarteng is absolutely right. So I think if the Conservative Party has any understanding of its predicament, um, then... If Boris goes, if Johnson goes, then then it has to be Sunak to take over from him. I, I say that I obviously without any enthusiasm at all. I don't particularly like Sunak. I I think he's absolutely part of the globalist uh, uh, um, rat pack, if you like. Um, I I mean he's obviously somebody who's always said that he's a Brexiter, but I don't take that especially seriously either. So I don't say that with any sort of enthusiasm, but he seems to be the only the only credible candidate at the moment. All right. So just to wrap it up, um, is Boris Johnson, are we at the stage now where Boris Johnson, he gets to decide whether he stays or goes? I mean, is it his decision no. now and only his decision? No. Um, he says, I'm going to fight this, or he says, okay, I resign because of pressure from the party. Or is there other mechanisms that... So, well, you know, we've he, lost confidence. I mean, the, 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 the point about him resigning under pressure from the party is not impossible. You remember, that was what Theresa May eventually But, but that's did. his decision. But that, Well, in theory, but, you know, they can all come theory, around and in, tell yeah. him, you know, okay, you know yeah. I mean, they can all take, come around and tell him, Boris, right. you know, we're devoted and loyal to you. But the fact is, uh, uh, support for you in the party and the country has collapsed. Uh, you know, this is the moment to do the right thing. And, uh, you know, you should go now. Um, if he's presented with a demand like that from, say, his top cabinet ministers, it would be very difficult, it seems to me, for him to refuse what they say and to try and cling on. Though with Boris, you never know. At the moment, all the indications are that he's might, intending to fight it out and to, hold it, and to hold his ground. As I said, the police have given him this extraordinary gift, uh, so he's only going to have to publish a heavily redacted version of Sue Gray's report. Why the police did that is, by the way, an interesting question. I'm going to say briefly that it reflects, in my opinion, the utter incompetence of Cressida Dick, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner. You, we have actually talked about her in previous programmes, uh, uh, but I think she is way out of her depth as uh, Metropolitan Police Commissioner. And as often these these sort of people often do, she's always on a quest to make herself seem more important and more you know, powerful than she really is. So she came up with this ludicrous idea that, you know, everybody must wait until she and the police come to a decision about whether 
any wrongdoing has been committed. And that could take a whole year. So I, I, I think it's more likely that than that she was put up to do it by Johnson himself, which is what a lot of people are speculating. But, um, and I ought to say that because my impression of Cressida Dick is that she's no friend or ally of Johnson's at all. She's on the liberal side of British politics, if I could just add that to. So whatever, it, whatever the reason, though, she's given, as I said, Johnson this gift. He doesn't have to publish the full report. It's made many people in the Conservative Party extremely angry. And um, whilst it's helping Johnson in the short term, I'm increasingly getting the sense that opinion against Johnson is continuing to harden. There are rumours that there are already now more than 56 letters of no confidence from MPs in Johnson circulating. So it's quite likely that we're going to see a... Um, a vote of confidence in him very soon. And I have to say um, that if there is such a vote of confidence, I, th I expect he will lose. Wow. Big, big week ahead. Oh, um, huge. But, you know, he's, he, he is Boris. He's still, got, so he's still fighting. He's not going to give up. He's come to the House of Commons. He's talking about doing a great tour of Eastern Europe to rally the troops against the evil Putin. He's sending his uh, defence and foreign ministers to uh, Moscow to have talks with Putin, or well, not with Putin, actually, but with other senior Russian officials. He's talking about how he's going to impose uh, sanctions on Russian oligarchs who've been sanctioned already. <laughs> he's, 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 he's trying to keep himself looking busy and looking active. And I don't know how many people it impresses. I think in the country it impresses absolutely no one. But, of course, amongst the hardline militarists within the Conservative Party, well, maybe it might win him some support there. We'll see. Putin to the rescue. Yeah. <laughs> Blame it on yeah. Putin when in trouble. Blame it on Putin, right. yeah. If Boris stays, it's Putin's fault. If Boris goes, it's Putin's fault. It's Putin's <laughs> Everything fault. Is, yeah. is Putin's fault. It's Putin's fault. Yeah, all right. Uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, we'll be covering this as it unfolds. Um, Duran, locals.com, the Duran.locals.com. Check us out there. Odyssey, Bitch, Shoot, Rumble, and Super U. And there is the mug. Good day. Use that as the code as well to get 10% off all merchandise. Take care.